Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Michael Filigera. I'm with LogicalSignals.com and TradersHelpingTraders.com. And this is the Elliott Wave update for the NASDAQ 100 for Monday, May 31st, 2021. I don't have a lot to add to our current analysis uh, other than my own take on the mood and, and how the NASDAQ has been acting for about the last week. Uh, but I want to take a quick review of where we've come from and where we're at within this larger picture. So the largest picture is that I am finishing and counting on uh, a very large level, a uh, cycle degree fifth wave. So within that cycle degree fifth wave, there are gonna be five waves of primary degree. And then on and then as each wave breaks down, that then in turn breaks down to its own five wave patterns. But the trend right now remains up. The very long-term trend is still up. But what we're now looking at is the fact that we are finishing a primary third wave. Because within that primary third wave, we have five waves of intermediate degree. And you can see on this long-term chart, I've counted intermediate one, two, three, and four, which puts us in intermediate wave five of primary wave three. <clears throat> now, going down within this uh, primary, excuse me, intermediate degree fifth wave, there's going to be five waves of minor degree. And as you can see, that's labeled by these Roman numerals, but in that orange color. And I have minor one, two, three, and four complete. <clears throat> So we're in minor wave five of intermediate wave five of primary wave three. So biggest degree, we're finishing a third wave. So what's next up on the primary level? A primary level wave four correction. So we drop that down to the intermediate level. Well, what we're gonna to have to be tracing out first is the A wave because we're finishing a fifth. So we're going into a much or a larger ABC correction because if we're finishing on the minor level is a fifth and on the intermediate level is a fifth, then we are coming, dropping into a primary level fourth wave and it's a correction, ABC down. So that's pretty big. And what's going to have to kick it off, I'm going to bring this back down so we can really count what peak we're trying to get to. If I come down here to the hourly, I need to go to the daily. I can't show enough. So on the daily screen, this is uh, minor wave force completion was here. That was in the beginning of May, May 13th, sorry, second week of May. And then within that, I have one, two, three. So this is for minor five. I pretty much have pretty strong feelings that, that we're completing the, the minute three of the minor wave five. So that's how close we are getting to the top. Not the ultimate, ultimate, ultimate top, but for the next several months, the top. So if I bring this down to the hour. Now, here we are again in this minor wave five. And here we have one, two, three. Now we're on the hourly chart. So this whole thing would have been a wave four or can still be a wave four, which would give us an opportunity or just give the market the opportunity to fulfill its Elliott and Fibonacci desire, which is to go up and, and put in new uh, highs to complete this larger cycle. So uh, to complete the intermediate wave five, to complete the minor wave five, to complete the intermediate wave five, and then on upward to the primary wave three. So we've got, you know, to get up there, we need a good high. And that could come in a blow off style, that could come in a lot of different ways, but it really has to pick up the steam and go. But coming into this, I, this whole activity, this, actually creeper rally, which did manage on, on um, Friday early to go 
and put a new high end for this sequence, for this wave three sequence. But I, it's such crap. It, it really is not a great rally. But if necessary, I can push this three over to here, which just puts us in another little wave four before we, we get this wave five going. But I'm going to leave that three here for the, uh, the time being, because this trading to me is not impulsive. Obviously, it's range bound. It's corrective, which it now finishes. Looks like it's finishing. That's A, and this was a B. We're going to drop in a C for this minute wave four. And now we're going to look at the possibilities of where we can go from there. But again, what I want to stress is that I'm trying to build the picture that the kind of top that I'm looking for is a, it is a major top. And then we're going to get a major correction. The ultimate down to the basement correction? Absolutely not. I don't see that coming for a while. But I think we're going to get a decent correction and it's going to pull the NASDAQ down. It's going to pull everybody down. In any case, what we need to do now Okay, so now I'm going to come down to the day to day and let's look at what I think might be happening for tomorrow. For tomorrow, I, I, I just kind of got a feeling that the market is going to turn, drop, and come down. I don't think it's ready to rally yet. For whatever reason, the NASDAQ has been stuck in this box and this corrective pattern, I don't think has been resolved. I don't really know what that reason could be because we can choose from several different areas, but it's stuck right here. And it's been that way. So we have to let the market resolve that and then tell us. But I think in the meantime, you're going to start to get people a little bit nervous. You're going to make position changes. We have the, the next June starting, all kinds of blah, blah, blah. But if we continue to move lower, we're doing so in a C wave down. Remember, C waves are related to the A wave in terms of intensity and where they can go. What's the most common? Where are the relationships and how do they play? For using Fibonacci relationships, the most common for a C wave <clears throat> as it relates to wave A is that it will be equal in length. That puts us at 13,631. This C wave should really get below that 13,606.75 before it's complete. So 13,631.5. 43 just doesn't cut it. Well, it could, but I don't really think so. But I think because of all this boxiness in here, it's going to get down there and maybe hang out. But I think ultimately, this is the zone that comes into play. The 0.1236, and then we have 1.382, and then 1.618 times the length of wave A. So wave C would be 1.236 times the length of wave A. At 13,600, and that's what I'm going to call it, a little above, a little below. And that fulfills the destiny of creating the new low below wave A at a minimum, but still that fulfills that little bit of the requirement for what we're looking for. And then right below that, we do have the 200 day moving average, and that's going to provide some support, but a break there could drive it down to the next. I mean, this is 382, that could fit, but that's pretty much in line with only that the 200-day moving average basically holds because it could drop another 100 down to uh, 13,578 ish 80 down to 75. That's the zone for 1.382. The second most common, though, is 1.618. And that's coming in at 13,550. And it would be a quick trip. So I'm not talking to just meanders around and then drifts and drops and drops and drops. I'm talking about it goes because there's going to be intent. The sellers are looking that someone's liquidating, someone's getting out. Whatever the situation is, it has purpose. Somebody's exiting and or many are exiting. So in that case, I'd be looking for the acceleration to the downside if indeed it was a C wave to come down. What's going to nullify all that if it just stays in the box? then it's just this whole move and eventually it should. It's got to resolve itself strongly. And that's why I think the down move now coming in is going to be strong enough to put that convincing move in. If it really starts to go up, it has to do it in the same fashion I'm thinking it's going to go down. Then it's got to go up and it starts to go into the zones, first of all, above 13,765. 
but it really needs to start heading folks back up above 14,000. If these other two markets are heading for new highs, the NASDAQ definitely was gonna participate at some level, but it needs to get above 14,064. That's the all time high right now. We're kind of, we get up in the hood, but it's got to put in the three, 400, 500 point rally. And then, and 500 points would really be stretching it. I've seen it, we all have seen it, but more likely 300, but it's got to do that for a couple of days. So we're going to need some optimism to come in here or something to flip all of this around. We've got too much going on politically. We've got the geopolitical functions going in. We have uh, how we're going to factor in the oil and the big switch if the infrastructure packet, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of not known facts that are going to dictate direction. And so till the market can really start to factor those in, this is what we get, this little sideways motion. But if everyone can come to some form of like, oh, yeah, that's the answer, it could cause the rally. So I, I don't know what it will be, but I, that's what I think will fuel it. So I think you're going to come above you know, 14,074. We have resistance all the way up, uh, but we've been looking for 14,200, 14,300 around in those levels to uh, be reached. But it's running out of steam. So in other words, if we when this five waves is done, five waves are done. There's only so far I can extend out. There's only so much that you can do before that's done and you got to go on to the next one. And so it would kind of shift the bigger picture back over to just a more shorter term negative. And that would take us back to where we're still within that uh, ABC correction for an intermediate fourth wave correction down. And we've still got this fifth wave up. But I don't feel it because we're not going in either direction right now. We're just hanging. So, and that fits more into this upside because it's hanging in the upper quadrants, it's hanging well above 13,000. And, um, and comfortable. So, buyers are comfortable right here. So, in any case, tomorrow, here's our, we have our working marching orders should the market start to go down. <clears throat> I intend to continue to use the short-term charts. But even the short-term charts, this is a 30-minute chart. You can see this activity. And this is going off of the 24th. You know, the highs that we reached on the 24th. And then that's where all of this started. And that, look at the 30 minutes. just think if that's going to be bullish. It's like, I don't think so. So the pattern itself, it's just the way that the market went. Does that mean that it can ignite and go up? Absolutely not. We've been here. We've seen it. So we trade what's in front of us. And that's really the underlying deep message through all of this explanation of the kind of top I'm looking for uh, versus what can happen tomorrow. We have to continue to trade what's in front of us. And therefore, we're going to continue to use the moving averages. And as they line up, if they line up going up, then that's, that means don't get in the way of the rally. Step on board and make sweet money. That's all the name of the game is. We're looking to be successful at trading and trading the day and trading each day this future or the S&P. So you just kind of go with it. But if your indicators are telling you that's what's going to happen, you go with it. Right now, they're not. They were very well lined up on Friday. And that was a good thing because it lined up going up and then it lined up coming down and then it got funky. So, but that move up, it was extremely, you could make, have made good money. Um, but you have to be mentally set for it. You have to be everything set for it. In any case, moving averages. If they're pointing up, jump on, particularly if the one, the two, and the five minute are in sync. And right now I'm looking at a 30 minute, which can put a little bit more longevity on what's going on. Because don't forget the 30 minute and the hourly when you're trading off of one and two minute charts, looking at those charts to think what we're topping or not topping, it takes longer to turn those boats around. So continue to trade what's in front of you without an expectation of what another chart might be telling you because of the time frame, And then the short term time frame, you can get blown out of the water, still waiting for this market, which will on an hourly basis go up and do what you think it should do. Enough for today. Uh, please remember that I am planning on uh, restarting the trade room. And these are the types of conversations that we have in the trade room. These are the things that we want to explain in the trade room. To improve and to educate is going to be the goal. And 
hopefully that helps everybody uh, pick up good habits and become um, consistently profitable. There's still going to be down days. There's still going to be you know days where you get oops that trade didn't work, but you want to be consistently profitable. You want to be able to handle it and you want to be able to do it properly. That's all for today. The next update will be Tuesday, June 1st.